Okay, thank you and welcome to today's class. I hope my screen is visible to you. I know the numbers might appear to be small, but um, let me, uh, uh, that is uh, expand, okay, or zoom, uh, uh, that is a uh, zoom out, okay. I hope now it's a little bit uh, visible. Okay, is it, uh, is it visible? Yes, it visible is. Visible enough, okay, good. Nice, so uh, this is uh, uh, income uh, expenditure data, okay? Like what you are, uh, uh, that is what you are receiving on monthly basis and what you are, uh, you, are uh, you are spending, okay? Also on monthly basis, okay? Basically, that's what uh, this data is about, okay? We'll see also, uh, like, let me start describing the data. Starting from the first, uh, that is column, you can see it is uh, like monthly income, okay? Then we have monthly expense, all right? And also we have maybe the number of family members or how many people, uh, people do you have in that family okay maybe the amount you are paying for rent okay and also the annual uh, that is uh, your annual income okay this is monthly income uh, monthly expense the number of family members uh, and also the rent amount okay and then we have annual income we have also the highest qualified member, okay? In terms of uh, education, I can say this is education. Are you undergraduate? Are you illiterate, meaning you've never gone to school? Uh, are you graduate, okay? Or are you professional, okay? In such way, like um, you might have done maybe a certain what? A certain um, uh, that is profession, okay? Uh, then we have the number of uh, earning members, okay, in that family, okay? Like, for example, just to give you an example, let's see for this person, who, uh, all these, uh, yes, let's say this, um, you can see, in this case, uh, we have uh, six members in this family, but only one member is earning. Okay, meaning the rest of the, that is the, the five other members depend on what? Depend on, depend on the, that is on the, this one member who is earning. Okay, all right. So basically what we are going to do, we will try also to check if we have any correlation between, uh, that is uh, income and expense. Okay. So we'll do the mean, that is uh, try to see the average, uh, that is the average, um, uh, what do we call it? Like the average amount of uh, income, okay, uh, within this uh, team, okay? And you can see, the, that is our data set, as data that ranges from uh, 5,000 to 100,000, meaning the highly paid person is earning what? Is earning uh, 100,000, okay? Then also for expenses, we'll also uh, do an average. Uh, also, we'll try to see the variance in terms of, uh, that is the expenses, how maybe uh, these people, uh, how, how is their expense, okay? Uh, uh, that is given. Uh, their income and also with that we'll be able to even do some averages now uh, under different classification or under uh, that is a uh, different qualification okay so with this so be ready to learn more uh, than what more than one uh, formulas okay uh, that is uh, in Excel, okay? So be ready for the, for more uh, 
uh, formulas i will give you that as uh, just as a bonus okay yes so good now the first thing i want us to describe what kind of data is this okay what kind of data is this so uh, we can start with someone uh, uh, what kind of data or what is the, uh, the data type for our uh, monthly income and expenses? Someone, I just want us to, uh, to make the class interactive so that you may, uh, it's like we are doing revision of what we, we discussed. Of course, this is a quantitative, okay? Yes, why? Because we are dealing with numbers okay we are dealing with numbers then under uh, that is under quantitative data how can we cate further cate subcategorize also the the income and the uh, that is the monthly uh, expenses then we have mohammed abdallah discrete yes very correct it is discrete why we can check, we can just uh, run through. So with that, I'm going just to insert, uh, that is to insert um, uh, filter, okay? I'm just going to insert a filter. You can either go to home, insert filter here, okay? We have filter here, so that you might be able to, uh, that is to uh, have an overview to your data, okay? Yeah, so with that, you can see we don't have any decimal. We don't have any decimal attached to these values, okay? As well, under uh, monthly expense data, we don't have any what? We don't have any, uh, that is, uh, data, uh, data which has decimal attached to it, okay? Then also when it comes to the number of family members, definitely he, this will be quantitative data and also under discrete because we can't, we can't have 2.3 uh, people or uh, two and a half people, okay? So in this case, it's a discrete, okay? Then when it comes to the amount of rent to be, uh, that is the rent amount, it's also discrete, meaning we have whole numbers, no decimals attached to that value uh, when we come to the income the annual income i can also see we don't have any we don't have any um we don't have any yes we don't have any decimal so that can be what we can term that as a uh, that is a as a discrete okay then let's move to Let's move to um, the other part, okay? So the other uh, kind of th that is type of data, it is uh, the highest qualified uh, qualified member. What type of data is this? What type of data is um, under the highest qualified member? Hello. Yes. So it is under quantitative. Under it is qualitative. Of course, it is qualitative. And then Collins has even gone further and subcategorized it. Okay has even gone further and subcategorized it as what? Ordinal. Why? Why ordinal, Collins? <clears throat> Hello, good evening. Uh, I think it's ordinal because there's an order being taken because we have uh, from the lowest level of education to the highest level of education. Correct, correct. Like we can what? We can, um, we can do what we call um, order, okay? We can order that data, okay? All that data tends to uh, to follow what? Like a natural, a natural order, okay? 
Yes, and that is uh, okay. I guess we've uh, we've covered up to that point. Like we've covered the data type uh, part, but maybe I would like to also share another uh, like this our second data uh, data set so that you may see what uh, we have. Okay, so that you can see what we have. So where is the second data set? So the second data set, let me, I guess I've not shared that. Okay, so the second data set, okay, so the second data set, it's uh, this uh, rainfall, let, let me say, uh, explain about the data set, okay. So basically, this is a data which shows umbrella cells of maybe a specific or of a certain uh, outlet, okay. Like we have an outlet that specializes in what? In umbrella cells. Then we have the uh, the amount of rainfall, okay, uh, within this period on monthly basis for the year 2016 and 2017, okay. So in this case, you can see uh, like we can, we, what we'll be doing, we'll be trying to, to find a relationship between what? The rainfall amount, okay, and what? And umbrella cells, okay, like do we have any kind of relationship between umbrella cells and what? Uh, and uh, the amount of rainfall. When maybe the amount of rainfall uh, maybe increases or decreases, how will the umbrella cells behave? Okay, that is now when it comes to cells, predicting cells um, and also trying to get more about like how we, you can plan uh, if you are dealing with what? Uh, with cells, okay? So in this case, you can see for the umbrella cells, definitely this will be what? This will be a discrete, uh, that is under quantitative data types, then it will fall under discrete type, uh, type of data. Why? Because we can't express umbrella cells in what? In Desmos, okay? So it's either uh, one umbrella, two umbrellas, or 30 umbrellas, but not 1.3 umbrellas, okay? It can't take fractions. Then when it comes to rainfall amount, you know definitely under rainfall, it will still be quantitative, but under continuous. Why? Because we can have, uh, that, is, uh, uh, um, uh, that is rainfall uh, data, it's always uh, or as Desmos attached to to that data, okay? So basically, it's what? It's a continuous type of data, all right? So in this case, it will be a continuous type of data. Good. I guess we are good up to that point. Maybe now we can now go to the descriptive statistics, okay? I want us to do now the descriptive statistics good one thing with the descriptive statistics remember for this uh, that is when we are talking about descriptive statistics we are talking uh, about numerical data or quantitative data in this case we are going with what we are going uh, with quantitative data okay Yes, we are going with quantitative data. So meaning we can do descriptive statistics, okay, for the, uh, that is, um, uh, uh, that is monthly income and also monthly expenses, okay, but we can't do descriptive statistics for what? For the qualified, uh, that highest qualified member in terms of education, because the data format or the data, uh, that is the data format here, uh, it's uh, formatted as a string or 
it is presented as a string entry okay string entry meaning it's more of maybe uh, that is a um, uh, qualitative in nature okay all right so i would like us now to start with what measures measures of central tendency tendency i guess this is the right spelling yes measures of central tendency okay when we are talking about measures of central tendency remember we were talking about mean okay we are talking about mod we are talking about what we are talking about median okay yes david i can see your hand is up okay thank you uh sorry i came late and uh, i see the data you shared for me um all the data are coming in one one column i don't know if uh, i can have uh, if you can help me to put to put the data in in columns okay can you share maybe your screen yeah yeah is it possible yeah it is possible okay you can share your screen then anyone another uh, anyone uh, having the same the same issue let me check if we, I share. All right, I know why. It's because I shared the data in CSV. I shared the data in CSV, but no problem. I can also, you can learn some something new uh, in case you get uh, that is data of such um, maybe type, okay? Or you get the, the data in such uh, format. Yeah. All right, I see. So, can you maybe expand the first, uh, that is, that first column? Yeah, like this. Okay. Column A. All right, I can see. So, basically, this data is separated by what? By comma, by, yes, they, they are separated by comma. Correct. That's yeah. true. So, can you yeah. highlight that column? I yes. like that column. Then go to data. Data, yes. Go to uh, text to column. Make sure you have highlighted that column. I, I, okay. Yes. Then we have I, text to so column. Can you go to your right? Move to your right slowly. Now, right. go. Uh, yes. We have filter. We have now there. Yes. Text to column. Yes. yes. So mm -hmm. click text to columns. Yes. So it has brought up a. Uh, okay. Can you share this uh, in, in uh, that is uh, like uh, share the entire screen, not a window, so that I may see those pop ups. Okay. Because I uh, because I can't see that pop up window, which okay. has popped here. Yeah. You can share as entire that like the entire screen instead of a window. Ah, correct. Now I can see uh, mm -hmm. that is uh, the. So yes, make sure uh, always make sure the limited is uh, checked in. Uh, that is is checked. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then go to next. Next. Yes. Now there. What is your separator? So in this My... case, it is comma. Mm -hmm. Okay. Can you see somewhere yeah. we have comma? Make sure mm -hmm. you check comma. Yes. 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 Check comma. So mm -hmm. you can see on the data preview, you can see it is already. It has already been separated okay okay mm. can you see on the data preview down yeah there? This yes. One. yes 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 so you can 
click next and then finish. Now okay. you can yeah you can try to resize that. Okay. Good. Okay, thank you. Okay, most welcome. All right. Thank you. I hope uh, anyone else who had the same issue um, we've we've moved together, right? Yeah. All right. Good. Then back to me. Let me share the entire screen. Okay, good. Now we were learning this, okay? That is, we under central tendency, we wanted to learn about what? That is the mean, okay? The mod and the what? And the median, okay? Yes. Then maybe I would also need to, to check the size. That is the size of our data set, okay? All right, good. So let me start with the size, or that is the size uh, of our data, or the sample size. Let me call it sample size. Sample size. Why? Why am I saying sample size? Because uh, I'm assuming this is just a sample data. If we were to get, uh, that is uh, data, uh, income data and expenditure for people, Okay, it might be a very huge data set. Okay, all right. So in this case, I will start with the sample size. That is our N. Okay, please, uh, I allow interruption in case maybe uh, I have gone so fast with a certain formula. Okay, please let me know, all right? All right, good. Now, I need now the sample, the sample size. So with that, which function, if maybe for people who are conversant with Excel, which function can we use to get the sample size? Someone? So in this case, because I've, I'm concentrating on the that is on the on the screen which we have the data. I don't want to keep moving back to check who has risen uh, the hand. You can always uh, unmute, okay, and interrupt. That I've allowed that, okay. So with this, uh, which function can we use to get the sample size? For those who have learned Excel. Sample size basically means like the entries of this of this data, like for one column. And we've seen that we don't have any column which has blanks. Okay, so we are assuming the count is the same. So which which function? Mohammed, Abdallah, which function can we use? Mohamed? Uh, I'm not sure, but I think uh, um, sum, then we use the first cell and the last cell. I'm not sure. Okay, sum, if we talk about sum, it's like I'm adding everything, okay? But I only need the sample size. Okay, let me help in this. Okay, so, count, yes? count A. You can use uh, count A. So count A meaning I'm counting all, right? Yeah. Count A basically means count all. So it will be equal to count, okay? Because I need the count of this, okay? So uh, maybe that was uh, a draw, right? So maybe at some point I will... Uh, agree and also disagree with you, okay? So basically, I will explain the different counts here. Uh, mostly, 
the the first four uh, the first five counts okay so when we talk about the first count here we are counting only cells which have numbers okay we are only counting cells which have numbers okay then you can even see from the description of the what of the count you can see it it is saying that counts the number of cells in 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 a range that contains numbers okay then when we talk about the second count that is count all it means it will count any uh, any cell which has a value or an input be it a number or a what or a text okay so you can see it says uh, counts the numbers of cells in the range that are not empty meaning they have a value be it uh, that is a, uh, that is a, um, be it a string or uh, that is a number okay then the second the third one count blank from the term count blank it is basically now counts the what the blank spaces okay it only counts the uh, the that is the the cells which are blank okay all right then we have the fourth so count if count if basically gives us a condition okay it's conditional uh, if statement if you have, you've ever heard of nested ifs okay i know you will learn more about nested ifs when you will be now doing uh, that is programming okay you'll use if else if else okay yeah so uh, uh, that is uh, those those are nested if so count if basically counts when we have what when we only have one argument okay or one condition then count ifs now uh, tries to show us what tries to show us now or it gives uh, we uses it when we have more when we have more than what when we have more than one condition okay we'll also try to use them i will just quickly try to show you uh, what i mean okay so with that let me try to uh, to copy this data maybe in a new sheet so that we may not um, mix up things okay so i'm just going to uh, that is uh, use this data set so in this case let me enlarge i hope it's visible so i want to do count count okay we'll also do count all okay we'll also have uh, count blank this is just a bonus because uh, it's not anywhere in uh, that is in the uh, that is the curriculum but it will help you more so when you are dealing with what with large or big data okay then we have count count sorry count if and count, uh, count if sorry count ifs okay good let's start with count so i've said count count will only count the values okay any numerical so with that we'll say equal to count okay you'll just select the first count and then we want to highlight now we can highlight maybe the the range which you want okay you can either drag highlighting or you can use what you can use uh, shortcuts like you can just uh, that is a click uh, that is a control shift and downwards arrow to highlight everything okay quickly okay so you can uh, that is a uh, highlight the first uh, value control shift on the same time uh, that is on the same time still holding control and shift you can now 
click the downward arrow okay you can now click the downward arrow and it will highlight uh, that is uh, all the data okay then you can just click enter if you click enter you will see this is our account okay this is the account which we have all right this is the account which we have are we together up to that point please respond so that i may yes. know we are together yes we are together yes okay thank you all right that's about uh, that is the first count we've said only counts uh, that is uh, numbers okay then let's come to the second count all count a basically means it is counting everything be it uh, let me uh, try to copy this other these are the um, no these are the um, data set here yeah? okay so count a counts all counts all the cells cells be it they they have maybe be it they contain strings or they contain numbers okay yes so like for example let's count we'll say equal to uh, that is count a now it will count a then i will count the first that is the only the first column okay so with that you can see it has counted all even though we don't have uh, that is a, a, a string a string here okay but you can see it has what it has counted something what if maybe i copy this okay and paste it here will it still count so you can see on the 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 first count it has reduced to 49 and the second count it has maintained what 50 why because the first count only counts what only counts um that is the the the, the cells with numbers and since we've altered this cell okay we've pasted maybe a numeric oh the, sorry a string that's why you can see a decline or it has reduced like for example even if i maybe paste another one you can see it will decrease to to 48 okay but this will maintain why because it counts both numbers and uh, strings okay let me just undo then we have count blank equal to count blank so for count blank i will still highlight uh, that is our data uh, that is our range and you can see we don't have any blank the count of blank is zero why because we don't have any blank here okay so what if we create a blank if we create a blank here we'll uh, return one okay where we have count blank it will return one and here it will reduce to to 49 why because we don't have a value in that cell okay so let me just remove this one so with that you can see even for uh, that is count all okay it has reduced why we don't we have a blank okay yes we have a blank so you can see uh, if we increase maybe the blanks okay if we increase the blanks you can see the count of blank will be increasing and then the uh, that is the count all and count uh, uh, count only will also what will also decrease okay all right let me just undo those empties then let's now come to if okay so as i have said if tries to show us maybe uh, that is statements okay it helps us to show maybe statements like for example we need a certain condition okay like we have a condition like for example i want to count okay how many illiterate okay how many illiterate people earn okay 
how many illiterate people have some earnings or they earn okay yes that's what i want to do okay like the i want to count the first that is we'll use the first count if count if so our condition here is to count only to count only the what the illiterate people okay and with this you can see if you have a data uh, that is a big data set you can't now start uh, maybe filtering like for example graduate you count okay you can't also start uh, filtering uh, that is uh, all this okay all right to get what to count to get the count so basically what i need i want to let me take this column I want to have all those categories so I'll just paste here then I'll remove the duplicates remove duplicates all right just to get these field I only need these fields okay so let's assume here so in this case I want to count if, uh, that is how many people are undergraduates how many people are illiterate how many people are graduate, postgraduate, and professionals? Okay, and then at the end, the count should give me what? Should give me uh, that is a total of what? 50 because we have 50 entries. Okay, so you can either, if you want to do a count, you can either use the count formula or you can use pivot table to summarize for you. Okay, maybe let's start with the formula and also try to check a pivot table how maybe the pivot table can uh, help us to do what to summarize this so with that will be equal to equal to uh, count that is count if because it's one condition count if then you can see we are told to now i like the range you can see we need now the range so in that case i will just highlight the range okay for that so that is our range then you can see after the range where we have you can see here we have the formula it guides you okay after range you can now put the criteria what is your criteria you want it to be what undergraduate so with that you will keep this criteria undergraduate okay yes then you can now close if you close you will find that you have 10 undergraduates okay now you can now go uh, doing the same for every what for every for every uh, maybe category but in my case i just want to drag okay so if i want to drag i have to do what something we call referencing Okay, like we are locking that column, not to move from that column. So with that case, I will lock this range. Okay, I will lock my range. That is E2 to E50 to E51. Okay, so with that, how do we lock? We usually lock using uh, uh, that dollar, is dollar sign. signs. Yes, using dollar signs. So will keep a dollar sign here so if uh, maybe you have a computer with the i don't know which type of uh, keyboard you can to lock the cells you can always click fn and f4 at the same time fn and f4 in the same time but for my case i have fn uh, key having some issues so i'll just add the dollar signs okay uh, manually so you will add the dollar sign between what uh, between this uh, that is those ranges okay you can see you will have to add the dollar signs between those range so this is not a dollar sign it is a hard okay then you can lock okay once you enter you can now drag and then you will have your what your output or your results and you can see the sum okay if i highlight this you can see the sum here can you see here the sum where my my mouse is hovering 
we have sum. Okay, it's 50. So just to cross confirm that our data is what? Our data is correct. Are we together up to that point? So in some keyboards, Fn, uh, F4 alone works. Yeah, it's okay. Nice one. E, that is in some keyboards. Um, uh, that is Fn uh, alone works, which is also good. Thank you for that, uh, Collins. I hope we are together up to that point. I just want to illustrate the last the last part and then we can now go back to our topic. So the, the, the second thing now is the count ifs. Count ifs. Meaning here, we'll need more than what? More than one, uh, more than what? More than one um, condition, okay? So basically, I would like to know and uh, maybe under graduate or under illiterate or under graduate, post graduate, professional. Okay. Who is earning more than what? How many people are earning uh, more than 10,000? Okay. More than 10,000 across these categories. Like under graduate, how many people in under graduate? are earning more than 10,000, okay, on month, that is on uh, monthly, okay. So I'm assuming these are our income, this is our level of education. So I want to know how many people under undergraduate are earning more than 10,000, under illiterate are earning more than 10,000, undergraduate are earning more than 10,000, okay. So with that, we'll just now use what we call count ifs. So for count ifs, it will be equal to count ifs, count ifs now with s. Okay. So in this case, you can see we have criteria range one and criteria range two. Okay. So we'll start with the first criteria range. So if it is criteria range one, this is our first criteria. Okay. Sorry, criteria range. So you are going to highlight that part. Then do comma. After comma, you will see now we need what? We need a criteria. That is criteria one. So our first criteria or our first condition is these people are undergraduates. Okay. Then go to the second. Then uh, that is you go now to the second uh, range. Okay. Now the criteria range two will be our salary okay it will be our salary then after salary after you highlight the salary range okay you'll do a comma okay and then uh, there is what there is a condition here okay there is a condition or the criteria which criteria now do we need okay we need anyone earning more than what more than 10,000. The Yes, more than 10,000. That's our what? That's our criteria. Okay. Anyone who is earning more than what? More than, uh, more than 10,000. Okay. If, uh, if uh, in that case, you can always, maybe if you don't want to put this as a criteria, okay, you can as well put it somewhere in a cell which you can always watch reference okay so in this case or oh, sign so with this case let me just use a uh, right somewhere like let me just select this cell and here it's where i will now put my criteria okay so with that i can now put 10,000 here if i put 10,000 okay you can see it is returning a value okay greater than uh, that is or uh, on um okay so for this case let me try and see greater than how i can e i can do the same i can create maybe that is that condition okay 
few arguments okay all right all right i know so i can treat greater than what if i treat it as a string just a minute greater than uh what ten thousand with will it work nice good it will it has worked so you can see now let me just uh, just a minute i i connect my charger All right. Okay, good. Now let's uh, go back to our that is our condition. Okay, so you can see now under uh, uh, that is uh, under our last criteria, we've said we need people who are now earning over what over a thousand, and for that we've treated it as a string by that is um uh, by putting uh, that is um uh, opening and closing what closing quotes okay so with that i will also need to what to lock uh, that is uh, the that is the two ranges this first range and the second range so with that we will also use our that is our dollar signs let's use our dollar signs Oh, nice. Even my F4, it's working. Okay, F4. Okay. So with that, now we can do what? We can drag. So you can see, out of, uh, that is our data, undergraduates, we only have three undergraduates who are earning more than what? Uh, who, who are earning, three undergraduates who are earning more than 10,000. Okay. Then illiterate, we have two uh, illiterate people who are earning more, more than 10,000. Graduate, we have 15 graduates who are earning more than 10,000 in a month. We have four post graduates who are earning more than 10,000. And we have 10 professionals who are earning more than what? More than uh, 10,000. Basically, that's how. That's how we do what? That's how uh, count, count ifs uh, are what? Are used. Okay? All right. I hope I was clear. Thumbs up, please. Mohamed Adwar, yes. Mohamed Abdallah, yeah, yeah. Okay? All right, good, 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 nice. Let's now come back to our topic. Now, mean, we said what is mean? We said mean is what? Is symbol average. So the formula to compute mean, so in this case, we can do, just do a table. I want a table which will give us the mean, uh, the mean monthly income and ma mean expense okay so in that case i can just insert these two uh, that is these two columns here and also maybe the average when it comes to what the members of a family okay number of family members okay all right so let's start with the that is the, with the with mean so basically we've said mean is what it's average okay it is symbol average and you can see also under under uh under uh, average we also have average all okay and we also have average if and average ifs meaning we can also do some conditions like for example what is the average maybe salary for illiterate people okay what are what uh, amount are the illiterate people 
uh, that is getting averagely. What is averagely um, uh, average amount the graduates are uh, maybe the graduates are getting? Okay, what is the average amount that maybe the professionals are what are also getting? Okay, so with that we can use uh, that is the conditional. Okay, uh, these uh, in nested ifs. All right, so our mean will be uh, that is symbol average. Okay, so it will be average of. Uh, now we'll have to select what our range. So that is that is our range, and then you can you can close the black brackets and and then uh, enter. So you can see. Let me try try to increase maybe the decimals to see if we have uh, decimals in the same. But I can see we are getting that is a a whole value. Why? Because we have um, almost an even value. So, okay, good. So, we have, this is what? This is the average uh, that is uh, income, okay, in this uh, data set. Like, uh, that is, these 50 people are averagely earning what? Uh, that is 40. 41,000, 41, okay? But you can see in this case, our mean will be kind of uh, be affected by what? It will, it's been affected by, by the outliers, meaning we have majority of people earning uh, more than what? More than 40, okay? You can see majority of the people are earning more than 40. Why? I'm saying we have some outliers because you can see in that population we have someone earning 100,000 and we have someone earning 5,000. Okay, so you can see we have a difference of 95,000. That's a very big difference. Okay, that's why you can see the mean has shifted to somewhere here to the middle. Okay, to the middle of what? Of the that is of the data set. Okay. All right, then we have, uh, that is the monthly uh, expenses. So the monthly expenses, you can see it is 18,000, okay, or almost 19,000. So these people are averagely uh, spending or uh, spending 19,000 to their, to their expenses. And then the average number of, uh, that is uh, of family members, it's four, okay? The average, uh, that is uh, family members, and uh, it's four. Like, it's like we are assuming uh, most of the what? The families have four, have four, uh, that is um, uh, family members, okay? Basically, that's what it means. Any question? before I can go to the next measure of central tendency. Okay, good. Let's go to mod. So for mod, uh, we'll use the mod function. We have mod function. Okay. So for mod function, we'll have mod single and mod multiple. Remember that. Okay. And I say that mod single basically gives us the very most occurring what? The very most occurring, uh, that is a value. So, so it will go first with mod single and do what? And highlight the range. Okay. We'll highlight the range and run. And in that case, you can, we can see, uh, that is 45,000 is the most paid what is the most paid amount okay 45000 is most paid amount and you can see it is occurring uh, four times okay it is occurring four times all right okay what about multiple mod multiple mod maybe in that case it might let me also extend this you can all you can always drag this Okay, so if we drag, you can see the most uh, maybe expenditure. Okay, 
among these people is most of the people are ex uh, uh, their expenditure is what like we have uh, 25,000 is the most occurring what expenditure okay it is the most occurring expenditure you can always filter out and try to see uh, that is who are these people who are spending this okay then the in the family in terms of a uh, uh, number of family members you can see even we when we scroll down you can see four is appearing most in this okay four is appearing most in this okay all right so what about uh that is a um, multiple mode so multiple mode will give us some values if at all okay like for example if uh, 45 is occurring like four times if we have another value which is occurring four times okay and another value which is also occurring four times then definitely we will get three what three modes okay provided they are occurring in the same time so in that case we'll try and see if we have multiple mode here so we'll say we have mod dot multiple okay of our what of our range all right and then we'll run so in this case you can see we only have one multiple mod okay because it's occurring more than what more than uh, it's occurring more than like it's the one which is occurring most people mo most uh, times okay so maybe let me keep uh, make also 100,000 to be like also it is occurring four times when I uh, do that okay when we come to this you can see the mod has increased like now we have two mods here 45,000 and 100,000 okay can you see that you can see I'm now getting two values here for you it might not happen because uh, depending with uh, the type of excel which you are using like for my case uh, here I'm using which uh, excel let me try and see uh, info uh, is it in for really should be account i'm using uh, that is excel uh, microsoft office 2021 okay so maybe this feature might go uh, that is uh, all this formula might uh, be different in uh, or you might miss that feature in the what in the previous um uh, versions okay but if your version has the x lookup if your function has x lookup then it can do this multiple mod if you can't see x lookup then no the, you can't return this kind of uh, that is output okay all right let me just undo that was just for illustration okay so let's now go to median median will uh, so it will be direct you'll just use median function okay and then i like maybe select your range so what median will do it will arrange behind the scene it will arrange all these values okay in ascending order okay and then take the that is the innermost value and since this is what you can see this data set is even so it will uh, it will take the two middle values add them then divide them by what by two okay then if we drag across you can see now we have what the mean that is the mean values for what for all this okay so basically now when doing maybe uh, that is when doing um, what we call uh, conclusions okay when doing conclusions 
what can we conclude about our what our sample data what can we conclude about our sample data so in our sample data we can conclude that uh, like we have average what average four member averagely we have four members in every what like in uh, these families okay like we have four family members in this uh, kind uh, families where we collected this data okay you can see it is evident when it comes to mean mod and what and median that's the case it's very evident we are getting almost the same uh, value then when it comes to the that is the income we can now give a range okay we can now give a range here and say maybe uh, most of the uh, that is most of the of the people okay most of the um, uh, that is the uh, people in this uh, data set okay and between what uh, and between 35 between 35000 to 40 to 45000 okay they earn between 35 to 45 there's there it's where we have what it's where we have majority okay then also in terms of expenditure it's between 15000 to 25000 okay yes so with that you can make uh, maybe some conclusions about what about your yeah that is uh, your data okay yes so with that we can get uh, we can get uh, some uh, that is some insights okay all right any question up to that point my people yes david I don't, I don't understand how you, how you, you get your insight uh, using the central tendency measures. Can you, can you repeat again? Yeah. So, so remember, uh, we say that uh, when maybe doing some conclusions, okay, when using like the central, um, central measures of central tendency, when doing uh, maybe some conclusions, okay it's not advisable to use mean alone or use mod alone or use median alone why because we know mean is affected by what mean is affected by by outliers like for example if i put like out of these people we found that one person is is earning 500000 okay so if we find someone is uh, like one of the people okay or is even uh, uh, maybe earning 1m let's say is earning 1 million okay so when it comes to our conclusion we can't use mean only okay because mean only will show us majority of the what or the average uh, uh, uh that is average of all these people are earning 60000 okay they are earning 60000 which is not the case okay that's why when maybe doing uh, uh that is some uh the, that is conclusion okay here we usually use what we usually use um what we call uh, that is uh, like the 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 three measures of central tendency okay like you can say basically averagely uh, maybe the income is coming between what between you of course you can see the median is the lowest and also we have the the mean that is the mean so you can see averagely uh, you can give a bracket okay averagely most of the most of the people are earning what are earning between 35,000 to 40,000. Let's try and see if that is the case. Okay. So, 30, we've said 35,000 and. Uh, okay. Just a minute. 35,000 and. 41. Then that might be. Yes, that might be wrong. Because when I come here now. 
and uh, try to uh, check between these or let me try and check any person uh, earning between what 35,000 to 40, let's say 42. We only have uh, five. Okay, now in that case, I will have maybe to change like the narrative and say like um, our median or uh, that is our, uh, that is our, like the central, okay, the central uh, salary, okay, of our population or of our sample is what? Is uh, about or it's within 35 and 40, okay? It is within 35 and 40. So within 35, between uh, 35 and maybe 40, let me highlight this and see if it is in the central position. So with this, I can count. This will be uh, 24 entries. And this will be 22 entries. So you can see, like our mean, okay? Our mean value lies between what? Between 35 hour and 40. Like our true mean. Our true mean, let me say the term true mean. Our true mean will lie between 35 and what? And 40. Like our true average, when it comes to the salary, it is what? It's between, it's between uh, 30, uh, 35 and 40. Okay? But not maybe majority are earning between 35 and 40. But with that, for us to know maybe majority are earning between which uh, uh, that is a amount then with that we'll have now to to we'll now talk about it when we'll be discussing what we'll, when we'll be discussing distribution okay when we'll be discussing uh, distributions all right that's okay that's clear a bit clear david David? Okay, I guess we are good. All right, so um, now you can go and do the same. Okay, you can go and do the same, like do some ex that exercise using the second. A data set using the second data set and then uh, from tomorrow now that is tomorrow we'll, we will be uh, will basically now uh, discuss uh, that is uh, variance variance um, standard deviation stdev and uh, we will also discuss covariance and correlation. Okay? Yes. And then after that, we'll do some graphs, some few graphs to show you how you can uh, present your analysis. And then we'll be done with, uh, with our first practice practicals okay then after that now we will continue uh, we'll now continue with um, that is the second uh, that is the second topic which will be regression analysis that's okay that's okay